thing to say. You better work. Good evening and happy Pride. As Speaker of the House, it is my privilege to extend congratulations to the Friends of the Stonewall and Gives Back Initiative as you celebrate your successful campaign to support LGBTQ centers and safe places across our nation. For five decades, the iconic Stonewall Inn has stood as a symbol of hope, pride, and resilience. Indeed, it was at Stonewall that brave LGBTQ activists changed the world a turning point that mobilized generations to create an unstoppable movement for gay rights and full equality. We are grateful that five years ago, President Obama took historic action to honor and preserve Stonewall Inn as the first LGBTQ national monument. This timely and essential campaign is even more important as a wave of disturbing legislation in the states across the nation threatens the safety and well-being of LGBTQ Americans. And we have also seen a disturbing rise in violence against transgender women of color across the country. Now, more than ever, LGBTQ centers and safe spaces are vital to protecting our vibrant LGBTQ community. As these havens begin to reopen after the pandemic, your contributions will make a tremendous difference in the lives of so many Americans, ensuring that they feel cherished safe and supported in their communities. Democrats are proud to fight for progress alongside the LGBTQ community. As you know, with your help, led by Congressman Cicilline and Senator Merkley, the, House Demo the Democratic House has once again passed the Equality Act, landmark legislation in the movement for full equality that will ensure that every American can live with dignity and pride, and we will not relent until it becomes the law of the land. We also support President Biden and Vice President Harris for their leadership. On day one, their administration ensured that Civil Rights Act protections prevent discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And they have taken strong actions to protect transgender youth and end anti-LGBTQ discrimination in our healthcare system. This Pride Month, let us renew our pledge to build a more just and more equal future for all Americans, no matter who they are or who they love. Thank you for your bold voices in the fight for full equality and for your generosity. Best wishes for a wonderful concert. Thank you.
are so happy to be here today. Stonewall gives back safe spaces for everybody in the community. Yes! We pride! Hi, we're here at the historic Stonewall Inn. I'm Tom Dangora. And I'm Michael Dangora. We are the co-producers and directors of tonight's event. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Stonewall Inn Safe Spaces concert, benefiting the amazing Stonewall Inn Gives Back initiative. It's such an incredible cause, and we're so honored to be here. I want to give a very special thank you to our co-producer, Victoria Viala. A very, very special thank you to the great Tim Guinea. And we want to thank all the performers for donating their time and talents to tonight's event. And a super special Special thank you to all the amazing people at CBS Viacom and Logo for streaming tonight's event. Isn't that amazing? But most of all, thank you to all the generous people out there who have donated to this amazing cause. And if you haven't donated yet, my husband Michael is going to tell you how to donate. Take it, Michael. If you have your phone on you, go ahead and text SAFE to the number below to make a donation. Or you can take the camera on your phone and you can scan the QR code right down here and it'll take you to the donation page. Thank you so much to everyone involved. It truly takes a village. We hope you enjoyed tonight's kickoff to Pride event. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Happy Pride! Hi, my name is Stacy Lentz and I'm the CEO of the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative and a co-owner of the Stonewall Inn. We are thrilled to be raising money for our Safe Spaces community partners all across the country. Not only is the work they're doing awe-inspiring, but it actually saves lives. Many of them are located in areas where it's still difficult to be LGBTQ, and not only that, they're being attacked by their state legislators with an onslaught of anti-trans bills. So we're excited to continue to partner with them as we launch the Stonewall and Gives Back Initiative Safe Space designation to make sure that public venues restaurants, bars, stores, and businesses that say they are actually LGBTQ friendly and safe actually are. You can follow our journey at stonewallinitiative.org and none of this is possible without your generous donation and the generosity of our sponsors, who we just can't think enough. Brooklyn Brewery, JetBlue, SCB Health, Saks Fifth Avenue, Video Out, Jennifer Brown Consulting, Hawkins Medica, the Roman and Andrew Sergru Foundation, and Jägermeister, who's actually doing a $25,000 donation match tonight as part of their Save the Night initiative, which is helping save nightlife across the country. Thank you and happy pride from all of us at the Stonewall Inn Gives Back initiative. Birmingham, Alabama has a history of being at the center of the fight for civil rights and the events that unfolded there helped pass the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Alabama is now at the center of the battle for LGBTQ equality as the state has just passed a law to ban transgender women and girls from participating in sports. This is why the critical work that the Magic City Acceptance Center in Birmingham is doing is literally saving lives. My name is Amanda, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm Lauren. My pronouns are also she, her, hers. We are the founding staff of the Magic City Acceptance Center right here in Birmingham, Alabama. We opened in the spring of 2014, and since opening, we have served over 1,200 LGBTQ young people. And youth for us is defined as ages 13 to 24. So we are incredibly proud to be here providing services to that many young people right here in Alabama. Before COVID, we were doing twice weekly drop-in hours for young people. We'd have generally about anywhere from 15 to 30 folks in the space every single Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. Um, coming with friends, coming with family, and of course some youth who their family could never know that they were here. Now that we're in the post-COVID time, we are doing programs online. We're on Discord for the entire state of Alabama. Any young person can join our programs and build community there. So we've been online almost 100% since last March. The worst part is that we moved to this huge, beautiful new space March 5th of last year, and then immediately turned around and closed the following week. And so this space is pretty much brand new to our entire community. And just last week, we hosted our first in-person program in over a year. So we're still learning how to be social and be around people again, 
but we're really excited to be here and offer these services for LGBTQ youth who deserve to feel heard and seen and uplifted, who right now their very identity is being questioned in our Alabama legislature. We desperately need all the support that we can get to continue to support all of these young folks who spent the last year in quarantine in spaces that may not have been safe or affirming um, or just haven't provided the community that they needed and so we appreciate y'all so 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 much from the two entire people who do all of this work here to support lgbtq youth in alabama thank you from all of us at magic city acceptance center we appreciate you so much and thank you and happy pride And please join me in supporting the Stonewall Inn Is Back initiative. Romeo and Juliet ain't an old fairy tale. You can't love him, love her. Yeah, we know the story all too well. We've been drawing lines, making signs to keep people from color outside the line. But this time,
Hey everyone, Jackie Cox here. We are coming up on the fifth anniversary of the Stonewall Inn becoming the first LGBTQIA plus national monument. Uh, and it's such a historic moment. You know, the Stonewall Inn is the birthplace for gay rights, certainly here in New York City, and it's because of this amazing community. So join us by donating to Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative and help this community because we have a long way to go. Stonewall Inn may be the first national monument, but there are gonna be many more, and it's because of people like you who can donate and contribute to this community. Hi, my name is Tree and welcome to Stonewall. I've been bartending here on and off for 52 years, ever since the night of the rebellion. And I'm still bartending on occasions. And for tonight's event, we're gonna make the signature drink by Jägermeister called Equality by Tree. First, we pour an ounce and a half of your ginger beer. After we pour the ginger beer, we take three quarters of an ounce of the pomegranate tea, which is made of sugar, pomegranate, and hibiscus tea. Ounce and a quarter of your Jägermeister. One ounce of lime juice. Then we add some ice. Then you shake it. Take your strainer and pour it right on top of the ginger beer. Then you add more ice. Put a wheel of lime on a drink, and I present it to you. Enjoy. And a very happy pride from Stonewall. We can find what feelings do. Happy Pride and happy fifth anniversary to Stonewall becoming the first ever LGBTQ national monument. My name is Kaiza and I really wish I could be there in New York celebrating with you all at the Stonewall Inn, but I'm in the West Coast preparing for my US tour with Lindsey Sterling right now. I can't wait to be there in person singing and dancing with you, but until then I'm excited for all the new music coming out. So by now I'm sure you all know why we're all here and if you haven't made a donation yet please consider scanning the QR code and making a donation to the Stonewall Inn Give Back Initiative. It's such an incredible cause and every little bit counts so much. And I'd now like to introduce the next musical artist up, Swedish singer-songwriter. He first came to the U.S. as a Christian missionary with his family. Rose to fame at the age of 21 with an incredible career selling out concerts but he wasn't living his true self. He has since re-emerged on the music scene, only this time he's singing heartfelt pop as his authentic self. Please welcome my close friend, Andreas Moss. Tell me what it's all for, don't know how to get up, I'm still breathing but so what, la 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 la, yeah. Tell me what to live for, I don't want to waste it. If it ain't love, then it ain't shit La 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 Yeah Guess I've been looking for real love Guess I've been looking for real, real La 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 Each played a role on this mattress A story so tragic Free falling into this madness I just had to have it I try but I don't see no changes Just different faces I thought that maybe you'd save me Save me Nothing sacred made of paper But I traded in for this feeling, this feeling I hope that you know that you were so much more than this And I'm sorry, I'm sorry I don't wanna bow 
all I guess we're human after all Ooh, yeah. I can't do one more night like this I've shattered all the beauty left inside of me My name is Kirk Kelly, and I'm the owner of the Stonewall Inn and co-founder of the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative, along with Bill Morgan, Tony DiCicco, and Stacey Lenz. The Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative is the official nonprofit of the Stonewall Inn. The Stonewall Inn is uh, one of the original LGBT safe spaces. It's where people could come to love whoever they wanted to love and be whoever they wanted to be. SIGBY, which is the Stonewall Inn Gives Back initiative, is continuing the legacy of safe spaces throughout the world. I feel it's really important that we know our gay history. This generation has to know what happened in 1969, what those people did that fought back for their right of today to say who they love and to say who they are. This year, our concert is raising money for centers in states where it's still tough to be LGBT. Thank you for your generosity and happy pride from everyone at the Stonewall Inn. In 1969, Stone was put on the map as the start of the gay rights movement. In a way, on the last Sunday in June 1969, the community demanded it become a safe space, a place to simply be. However, the history of Stonewall started long before then, and the Stonewall Riots wasn't its first brush with the law. The Stonewall Inn, sometimes known as Bonnie's Stonewall Inn, in honor of its proprietor, Vincent Bonavia, opened at 91 7th Avenue South. It was a restaurant and tea room serving light meals and non-alcoholic drinks. But it was the 30s, so it was really an illegal speakeasy, and it was raided by police in December of 19. 1934 signaled the end of Prohibition, and Bonnie's Stonewall Inn reopened as a bar and restaurant at 5153 Christopher Street, where it still stands today. In 1964, the restaurant's interior was destroyed by fire. However, two years later, mafioso Fat Tony Lauria invested in the Stonewall, turning it into a gay bar. It wasn't uncommon for the Mafia to be involved in New York City's gay bars, and they turned quite a profit. They registered the club as an exclusive bottle bar, which did not require a liquor license. They charged $1 during the week, $3 on the weekends, and they made everyone coming to the bar sign a ledger in order to maintain the club's false exclusivity. The Mafia also made money off the bars by blackmailing some of the wealthier patrons who did not want the public to find out about their sexuality. The Mafia's newest gay bar, the Stonewall Inn, was the epitome of a dive bar. They simply painted the room and windows black to cover the fire damage. The club didn't have a fire exit. They rolled in a jukebox and a few tables, and that was the new Stonewall Inn. The bar didn't even have running water, but because it was one of the only gay bars with any sort of dance floor and a jukebox, it became quite a popular hangout. However, as the West religious, acceptance of non-traditional lifestyles was growing. The laws regarding gender conformity and homosexual activity was not. Not only was the West Village's attitude changing, so was Broadway. On that original jukebox was a song from the hit Broadway musical, Hair, called Aquarius, 
let the sunshine in. We actually met doing the Broadway revival of Hair. And for this pride, we hope, as the song says, love will steer the stars. Happy Pride! How can people be so heartless? How can people be so cruel? Easy to be hard. Easy to be cold. How can people have no feelings? How can they ignore their friends? Easy to be proud. It's easy to say no. Especially people who care about strangers, who care about evil and social injustice. Do you only care about the bleeding crowd? How about a needing friend? I need a friend. People have no feelings. You know I'm hung up on you. Easy to be hard. Easy to say no. Especially people who care. Seventh house, and Jupiter aligns with Mars. Then peace will guide the planets, and love will steer the stars. This, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. Aquarius. Aquarius Harmony and understanding Sympathy and trust abounding No more falsehood or derision Golden living dreams of vision the Mystic crystal revelation And the mind's true liberation Aquarius Aquarius This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, 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 Aquarius. Shine, let the sun shine in the 
It's Amy Poehler and I'm here to say happy Pride and happy kickoff to Pride Month. Um, and while there's a lot to be proud of about this past year, President Joe Biden overturning the horrific anti-trans legislation, an openly gay man being a viable candidate for the presidency, little Nas X giving the devil a lap dance, there's still a lot of work to be done. Not only do LGBTQIA individuals and Americans still suffer the indignities and fear arising from the kind of social intolerance of the past, but increasingly many state legislatures promote legislation designed to inhibit or even reverse LGBTQIA civil rights achievements over the past 50 years. So we need your help. With contributions to the Stonewall Inn Gives Back initiative, we will be able to provide strategic and financial assistance to grassroots organizations across the country that are committed to supporting LGBTQIA individuals and underrepresented communities. Not everyone is fortunate enough to live in tolerant New York City or a town as welcoming as Pawnee. So this is where the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative comes into play please consider donating by scanning the QR code on your screen. And when you do, know that you're helping to make a difference. Thank you so much and happy Pride, everyone. As a mafia-operated gay bar in the late 60s, police would come to the Stonewall Inn once a week and receive an envelope of cash, a payoff, hush money, often referred to as gayola, but raids were still a fact of life. Usually, corrupt cops would tip off these mafia-run bars before they occurred, allowing owners to stash illegally sold alcohol and hide other illegal activities. However, part of Stonewall's popularity outside of its dance floor was that it also welcomed drag queens, who received a bitter reception at most other gay bars in the city. At the time, though, this was also an illegal activity and a customer could be arrested for not wearing at least three articles of clothing that matched their gender. Around this time, gay rights movements around the country were beginning to form and activists were becoming more and more vocal, especially in the West Village. I mean, after the famous 1966 sit-in orchestrated by the Mattachine Society, an early organization dedicated to fighting for LGBTQ rights, well, members of the community were beginning to feel empowered. And on the morning of June the 28th, amidst the community's growing strength and resilience, frustration over the police raids reached its peak. When Desmond was a father, he loved playing dress up. He used to make costumes out of things we had around the house, and then he would put on these uh, like concerts where he would get in his homemade costumes and, and sing and dance to Lady Gaga and Miley Cyrus. One day he saw RuPaul's Drag Race and he loved the costume and the makeup and the pageantry and the sparkles and the glitter and said, I want to do that and we let him. And so he blossomed and he bloomed and then in 2015 he went viral at the New York City Pride March when he danced in drag down the parade route and photos of him doing so make around the world. Since then, Desmond has walked at New York Fashion Week. He has written a children's book. He's launching a, uh, a social network for LGBTQ youth and teens this summer. And he talks to a lot of schools and students virtually 
about how to be yourself. I am the most proud parent you can ever imagine, my husband and I. Devin is the most amazing drag kid that we know. So without further ado, here is Desmond Amazing with his new song, We Are Amazing. Ooh la 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 la. How do you say? Amazing, 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 amazing. Pride. Thank you all so much for supporting this incredibly important cause. Because of your support, the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative Safe Spaces designation process will help ensure that public venues, restaurants, bars, and shops that say they are LGBTQ plus friendly truly are by putting in the work to make everyone feel safe. It's 2021 and our communities across the country deserve nothing less. This most important work couldn't happen without your generosity. So truly, thank you, I'm grateful. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate one of the community's original safe spaces, Stonewall, on the fifth anniversary of becoming America's first national monument. Love you guys, thanks, happy Pride. What are the things we want you to know about the Stonewall Inn? Well, the Stonewall Inn is celebrating the fifth anniversary of the first National Gay Monument. So, don't worry, be gay. I wanna thank everyone who is participating in and giving to the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative. And I wanna draw your attention to one of the very important beneficiaries of your generosity. And that is the Borderland Rainbow Center here in my hometown of El Paso, Texas. The Borderland Rainbow Center has been helping LGBTQIA people in my community get the support that they need. 
that can include legal services. It can include mental and physical well-being. It can include cultural and spiritual support, among many other things that many people here in El Paso depend on. As you know, this last year has been a tough year for America, a tough year for El Paso, and it's been a tough year for the center. We want to make sure that they're able to come back strong with your donation, with your help. They will. So please give and please know that we're grateful. Thank you. Growing up in Texas was in, was hard and incredibly lonely sometimes. Now with the Borderland Rainbow Center around, LGBTQ youth no longer need to feel that loneliness that so many generations before felt. As a transgender woman, the Borderland Rainbow Center has given me and El Paso's LGBTI plus community so much in the way of specified community support groups, local volunteer work, and local activism. My family and I have been really grateful for the support and the information that the Borderland Rainbow Center has provided us. CRC is the only institution in town that serves the distinct and specific needs of the LGBTQ plus community. I have a 14-year-old transgender daughter and a 12-year-old cisgender son. We found the Borderland Rainbow Center and they welcomed us from the very beginning. We were provided with therapy for our daughter, support groups for our entire family. I watched our daughter go from being hidden in a very unsure shell to emerging with beautifully confident wings. CRC offers over 400 individual events, programs, and training sessions yearly. I'm a therapist at the Borderland Rainbow Center in El Paso, Texas. And I'm the membership director for the executive board of the BRC. We're also both fellows of the Diversity and Resiliency Institute of El Paso, DREAP, a project of the Borderland Rainbow Center. At DREAP, we're committed to educating licensed professionals, community partners, and allies about the diverse needs of marginalized communities. My role with the BRC is to support our recovery programs. I facilitate our weekly Stonewall Addictions group, as well as case managing and accompanying as a peer, many other clients who have struggles with addiction. COVID-19 pandemic forces to close the BRC building. The services, programs, and trainings continue online. All of our therapeutic services are now available virtually anywhere you can get a mobile or Wi-Fi signal. Because of donors like you, the BRC's therapeutic services have provided over 550 free individual sessions using grant funding and private donations to create access for low income and uninsured individuals. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your generous donation. It's because of people like you that we're able to create programs like the Institute, where we work with professionals and community members to provide educational content that promotes our values of social justice, building community resiliency, and creating spaces and mindsets that are inclusive and affirming for everyone. Because of them, I found the courage to be the woman I am today. Please let me express my gratitude and appreciation for your support. Thank you so much for your support. As your donation helps the BRC to continue providing these important services to the LGBTQ plus community in El Paso. Thank you again so much for your generosity and for being part of our team. Thank, Thank you, you from, from all of us at the Borderland Rainbow Center. Center. A holiday? Of, of course, course we, we do. do. But we, we do, do it, it like this. this. One, two, three. Holiday mm. celebration, come together in every nation. Holiday mm. celebration, come together in every nation. And happy fifth anniversary of being the first and only LGBTQ National Monument. And happy 30th anniversary of the release of Truth or Dare. And of course, happy Pride 2021. Come on, everybody. Get your party on. Bye. Hi. I hope you're all enjoying the Stonewall in Safe Spaces concert tonight. LGBTQIA+. Safe spaces are life-saving resources that must be preserved and protected. It's important that we continue to make more safe spaces across the country for the LGBTQIA community. Thank you so much for your support. 
Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here as the Lord of the Lesbians, Leah Delary, to help kick off Queer Pride here at Stonewall. And I brought a couple of friends with me. The awesome and astounding Helen Sung will be on the piano. And the strong and powerful and masterful Mr. Dylan Shamat will be on that acoustic bass that you're seeing over there. That is not a violin. Okay? And now we are going to say... Happy Queer Bride, and who can say that better than David Bowie? A one, two, one, two, three, four. Day up, dip, day up, dip, day up, dip, day up, dip, dip, day up, dip, day up, dip, day up, dip. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes, dance the blues. Let's dance to the song they're playing on the radio. Whoa. Let's sway while the colors light up your face. Let's sway, sway through the crowd to an empty space. If you say run, I will run to you. If you say hide, we'll hide. Because my love for you will break my heart in two. If you should fall into my arms, tremble like a flowerless hands. Let's dance. Let's dance. Let's dance for fear tonight is all. Let's dance for fear your grace shall fall. Let's sway, you should fall into my arms. Let's sway under the moonlight, this serious moonlight. If you say run, I will run to you. Say to hide, we'll hide because my love for you I would break my heart in two if you should fall into my arms, tremble like a flower. Let's dance. Do na de de bo bo ba bi du ba o la du ba du ya du ba ba du yu du ba ba du ba bu ba yu ba da du le du ba yu bo du ba ba bo du la de bo du la de ba bu ba yu ba da le du ba ba de du ba o de fe du ba o la du ba ba du ya du ba ba du ba du ba du ti 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 ba du du de ba du ya for the move out you move out of the body, but the move out of you made out bow, but the lady out bow. But the little body to the baby, but the body, the deep, be the pep, 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 Let's 
Sex with Mick Jagger, we don't know. A do ba do ba do it, it, Of June 28th, 1969, the Stonewall Inn was not tipped off that a raid would be happening. With two undercover cops already in the bar and armed with a warrant, police stormed the premises, roughed up patrons, confiscated alcohol, and arrested 13 patrons, including a writer from the Village Voice. Fed up with all the raids, constant police harassment, and social discrimination, Angry patrons did not disperse this time. They hung around outside, and neighborhood residents joined them as they watched patrons being aggressively manhandled and put into police vans. At one point, an officer hit a lesbian over the head as she was being taken to the police van. She shouted to onlookers, why don't you do something? Why don't you do something? It's believed that that is the moment the Stonewall riots truly began. The crowd began to throw coins and bottles and cobblestones at the police. And within minutes, a full-blown riot was underway. The police, with a few prisoners and the village voice writer, barricaded themselves inside the bar, while the mob outside attempted to start their barricade on fire. The fire department and the riot squad were called in, and eventually the crowd dispersed at around four in the morning. However, and for the next five days, and especially after the Village Voice published an article recounting the raid, thousands of people continued to protest outside the Stonewall Inn. At 1.28 a.m. June 28, 1969, blue lights flashed throughout the Stonewall Inn, signaling that the police were raiding the safe space. At that time in history, it was illegal for two members of the same sex to slow dance together and to serve a homosexual a drink. That is what they called us back in the day when they were trying to be nice. But the Stonewall Inn was a place that allowed both of these events to occur in addition to letting people freely express themselves. Times have changed, but we still need to make sure that places that let us be ourselves continue to evolve and exist please consider making a donation to help fund the safe spaces of today. Go to stonewallinitiative.org. Hey, this is Matt Palmer. I was so fortunate to spend the first 10 years of my life in the great state of Missouri. It's a place that will always be very special to me. And I wanted to let you know about another one of the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Safe Spaces community partners. It's the Kansas City Center for Inclusion which is a safe and supportive space for LGBTQIA adults and youth, offering community resources, technology access, and a welcome space for small events and gatherings. Located in Midtown Kansas City, Missouri, they engage with the surrounding Kansas City area by providing a safe haven in combination with other local organizations and resources to better educate towards the purpose of enriching lives for members of the LGBTQIA community within the greater Kansas City area and throughout the heartland. My name is Adora Wade, and I am the Vice President of the Kansas City Center for Inclusion, the LGBT Community Center for the Kansas City Metropolitan Region. What we do here continues to support the, the work that started 55 years ago. One of the first coalitions of LGBTQ people was the North American Conference of Homophile Organization, and that was in 1966, and that's commemorated in downtown Kansas City. Well, the center has come a long way. Where we are right now was just a 
a vision um, in those early days. The programming is at a different level than it was in the beginning. We now have center staff, a wonderful volunteer program. We are officially moving to a new location. We're just, we've just grown leaps and bounds. So I've been here for a couple of reasons. Sometimes I come here for support. But today, I'm here as a vendor for the Queer Bazaar that happens every month the, during the second Saturday here at the Kansas City Center for Inclusion. Safe space for like sober people to come to or um, a place for queer individuals to gather that isn't a bar. This is my safe place, and when I leave here, I'm like, it's my zen. I love coming here, and I love everybody that walks in through the doors. Um, having joined the center during a pandemic was kind of hard, but I'm very excited to see the space flourish with people in it. One of the most important things I think we've done here is partnering with other organizations to have a very large forum for municipal leaders, county leaders, and state leaders to come together and listen to a presentation on everything that they need to be paying attention to as policymakers. As an LGBTQ youth, I didn't have that sense of identity, not just as someone who was young, but as a gay man, a gay black man. A friend of mine introduced me to the center. I was like, oh my God, I've learned so much about who I am as a person, who I am as a leader. Kansas City Center for Inclusion, they mean inclusion. It's not just a buzzword. From our hearts to yours, we thank you so much for everything that you're doing and everything you have done to uplift the LGBTQ community. So from us here at KCCI, we thank you. Keep on keeping on with pride. To all the people who fought for love over the past decades, we want to say thank you. Thank you for creating a world where everyone can live their fairy tale. Daddy!
Hello, my name is Allison Cambridge. I support the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative because they are doing life-changing work in the areas that are still waiting for their Stonewall moment and are continuing to spread the Stonewall legacy to the faces, spaces, and places that need it the most. You can learn more about their work at stonewallinitiative.org. Please donate so they can continue this important work. Thank you and happy Pride. Despite national marriage equality, proposed anti-LGBTQ legislation, and rising hate crimes demonstrate that full equality is still a long way off. We have an obligation as allies to fight for it, especially in places where its absence affects the lives and well-being of LGBTQ children. Hi everyone, my name is John Perkins. I'm the board secretary and festival chair for Gulf Coast Equality Council. We're an LGBT organization on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. One of the main projects of the council is to establish a community resource center. We hope that with this community resource center, we can provide a safe space and not just for those of the LGBTQAI plus community, but any of those in our local area who are facing inequality. I think a safe space should be a welcoming and safe environment for all members of the LGBT community. A place where people can freely be themselves and be surrounded by others who are understanding and supportive. A place that we can go for refuge. Being accepted by your, what I call a chosen family. It's a space where you can finally be yourself and not worry about how you're going to be treated. I think that we all um, are deserving of a safe space of some sort. With opening the center, we hope to provide several services. One of the main things we're wishing to provide to the community would be free and confidential STI testing. We would also like to provide free counseling services, open a food pantry, a community closet, offer tutoring and educational services. So we are striving to offer all of these and more as soon as we can open our doors. Thank you. The events of the Stonewall Riots oftentimes seem to be fuzzy, both in the history books and in the memories of those who were actually there. For years, there was a massive debate over who threw the first brick. Was it legendary activist Marsha P. Johnson? Was a brick even thrown? For years, many believe the riots occurred that night because the crowd was grieving the sudden loss of Judy Garland. Some claim that the scene outside the stone wall was violent, while others claim it was festive with people doing kick lines to ward off police brutality. The following year on the last Sunday in June, the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, New York activists organized a march to commemorate what they called Christopher Street Liberation Day. The anniversary of the Stonewall Riots also served as a catalyst for similar marches in Chicago, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. These first gay liberation marches, as they referred to, were celebratory with a serious goal, to inspire a widening activist movement. In the 1980s, as these marches began to take on a less politically radical nature, organizers began replacing the term gay liberation with gay pride. And today we refer to them with the letters and colors representing and celebrating all in the community. Today, these parades are quite the celebration of history and community with elaborate floats, inventive costumes, and an infinite number of rainbow flags. Tatiana Furman here, CEO and founder of Bridges for Life and chair president of the LGBTQ Work Center, New York chapter, here celebrating the lives of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, while also acknowledging the indigenous lives of the TGNC community that Bridges for Life and the LGBTQ Work Center work so hard for and fight so hard for to protect and serve. Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were prominent figures 
as the Stonewall Riots and were true pioneers of the LGBTQ rights movement. They were often also attacked and marginalized for their gender identity and their gender expression, often being ridiculed and made fun of. Today, the gender non-conforming and transgender community is still at large and is constantly still being attacked. So far this year, 82 anti-transgender bills have been introduced in the state legislators across the country. And in addition to that, we're facing a state of emergency. 29 transgender women and non-binary conforming people in my community has been killed, murdered thus far. This is why safe spaces are so much needed for the TGNC trans and non-binary community. I am Tatiana Furman and I stand with my community. Hi, I am Rita Wilson and thank you for supporting the Stonewall Inn Gives Back initiative. To make a donation, you can click on the link below or you can scan the QR code or text in your donation. Happy Pride, everyone. Hi folks, my name is Angelica Torres. I am one of the board members for the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative. Unfortunately, we still live in a world where by POC queer people, overwhelmingly by POC trans women, are unsafe in public spaces. And so with the Safe Spaces program, we're going to cities that are criminally underserved, um, underrepresented, these folks feel as though they have no community out there and they truly don't have much in the way of visibility or, or community. And so I think it's vital to take these sorts of conversations to the places and the cities that, that can also benefit from having the support. Here are some fun facts that you might not have known about the legendary Stonewall Inn and the Safe Spaces Initiative. In 2019, Taylor Swift kicked off the Safe Spaces Initiative. She led a sing-along with Jesse Taylor Ferguson to shake it off. I hear to a very packed crowd. Part of the reason for Stonewall's popularity in the 60s was that it had a jukebox. Needless to say, Shake It Off was not featured. On the jukebox. But it did have some hits on it. There was Aquarius, Let the Sunshine In, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love, uh, My Way, My Sherry Amore, Build Me Up Buttercup. Big hits. Big. And this jukebox would be complete without Barbara Streisand's rendition of Before the Parade Passes By. Did you know that there's only one known photograph from the first night of the Stonewall Riots? It was taken by Joseph Ambrosini and appeared the next day in the New York Daily News. It ran on page 30 with little significance and the headline, Three Cops Hurt When Raid Riles Crowd. The funeral of Judy Garland was held the day before the Stonewall Riots began. She was and is easily one of the biggest gay icons of all time, having starred in The Wizard of Oz and A Star is Born and Meet Me in St. Louis. I don't think we have to explain to this audience who Judy Garland is. The urban legend that Judy's death played a role in the uprising possibly came from a Village Voice article written by right ring, right ring, bitch, why you gotta put that in there? Right wing writer Walter Troy Spencer. A few weeks after the riots, he wrote, the combination of a full moon and Judy Garland's funeral was too much for them. He also called it the Great Faggot Rebellion. In 2012, in his second inaugural speech, President Obama mentioned Stonewall. And while on the 2020 campaign trail, Joe and Dr. Jill Biden stopped by the bar, President Biden even poured a few behind the bar and ordered a round for the crowd that were there that night. Speaking of gay groups, in 2019, the openly gay, like there's any other way to be, Prime Minister of Ireland and his husband, Matthew Barrett, stopped by Stonewall Inn for a pint on St. Patrick's Day. In 2016, Hillary Rodham Clinton made history yet again by becoming the first presidential nominee to march in an LGBTQ pride parade. She concluded her historic march at 
You guessed it, Stonewall. The statues in Christopher Park, right across from the Stonewall Inn, were designed by artist George Segal and are called the Gay Liberation Monument. It was commissioned in 1979 to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. Although beloved today and part of the Stonewall National Monument, at the time, it was met with its fair share of criticism as the artist is a heterosexual cisgender male and the characters depicted aren't as diverse as the crowd that would actually have hung out in the park 10 years prior. The New York Yankees and the Stonewall Inn Give Back Initiative teamed up to create the Yankees Stonewall Scholarship, which awards five New York public school students $10,000 grants, one from each one of the five boroughs. Like many old buildings in New York, the Stonewall Inn, well, they have a ghost and they call her Judy. And whenever anything weird happens, like, oh, lights go on without being turned on, or there's suddenly a puddle of water there for no reason, everybody always says, that's Judy. Uh-oh, that's Judy at it again. Oh my God. Hi, Judy, we love you. I love Judy. Duh, everybody loves Judy. That is a fact. Everyone loves Judy Garland. And we'll be back with more fun facts in just a bit. Good evening, I'm Lorna Luft, and I am a proud advisory board member of the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative. Now, over the years, I have heard so many stories of why the Stonewall riots happened on June 28, 1969, a few hours after my mother, Judy Garland's funeral. The story has gone from fact to fiction to legend. But the truth is that a group of wonderful LGBTQ people stood up to the brutality of the NYPD and said no more. The entire neighborhood erupted and they fought back they fought back against discrimination and harassment, and they fought for their human rights. After five days, the riots made the Stonewall Inn the first safe space. This year's concert is to raise funds for several of the community safe spaces in parts of the United States that need it the most. By texting SAFE to the number below or scanning the QR code on your screen, you can donate to make sure that an LGBTQ person never ever has to worry about being safe. They will be heard, they will be seen, and they will be respected. These safe spaces are vital to communities that they serve, and we are incredibly, incredibly grateful for all of your donations. Please have a happy, glorious, and wonderful safe Pride. Thank you. Hello, and happy Pride. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. One of the community partners for the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative is the Utah Pride Center. The incredible work they are doing in their community is literally saving lives and showcases how vital safe spaces are, particularly in places where it's still tough to be LGBTQIA+. Your contribution tonight is helping ensure the Utah Pride Center can continue their important work as they reopen. Thank you. We know that the studies show young people going into schools, if they know that there is a GSA or a supportive teacher, they feel safer. They stop um, skipping schools. Their GPA increases. Mental health improves. And that's what this place is. We're here to let everyone know that we exist and that there is a place somewhere for the kid that feels invisible. Well, 2020 was a little bit difficult just because my biggest program is SAGE. It's the seniors, so anybody 50 and over. So moving into a virtual world with seniors is not that easy. 
but you know, we muddled through and we did great. So looking forward to 2021, we're still gonna provide our low cost, high quality individual therapy. Um, we're still gonna be able to provide our groups. Um, we have seven different um, support groups that, that we provide currently, and we're always adding more. Just this year, we created the um, Survivors of Religious Trauma Support and Processing Group. This spring, the Utah Pride Center, through a program called Rainbow Wellness, is offering classes and workshops so we can reconnect, learn, and grow together while healing from this past year. We created a, um, a group for partners of folks that are trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming, a lot of different trainings, workshops, classes, groups, it, it, just really a holistic approach to supporting the well-being of our LGBTQIA plus community in Utah. And I look at the work that we're able to do here through Queer Prom, through this conference, it is humbling to know that we at the Pride Center can do that work. One of the most wonderful stories we have is when Project Rainbow goes out and puts their flags up around the community and we get letters from students or, or young people who see the flag and they, they go, you won't know how much this means to me because we can't put a flag up in our house, but just knowing that that flag is at, your, at my neighbor's house has made a difference. Want to know something else? It's fine. It takes some time to realize you survived when all this time you thought you never should. Like someone else should get to be the one reflected back at me, and it's good that we're here tonight. Good. The time goes by and it's good That in spite of plans to blow us up or tear us down We survive There's a moon There is still a moon There are birds will always be birds and I've been given a voice and a pair of hands and a chance to feel alive in Provincetown Provincetown, in Provincetown, 
in Province Hi everyone, I'm here on behalf of Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative, uh, the official nonprofit of the Stonewall Inn. In 1969, the Stonewall Inn was one of the original LGBTQ safe spaces where people were free to be themselves and could uh, socialize uh, and be together and love who they wanted to love without fear of uh, persecution or judgment. And 50 years later, goodness, 50 years later, uh, the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Initiative is now continuing that legacy by creating safe spaces throughout the country. With the help of community partners, they will be creating a Stonewall Inn Gives Back Safe Spaces designation for public venues, stores, restaurants, bars, and companies to ensure that the LGBTQ community can shop, travel, work, live, be safely and freely. Um, think of it as the good housekeeping seal of approval. Um, that unfortunately we still need in the 21st century. And I just want to thank uh, the Stonewall Inn uh, Gives Back Initiative for uh, this important work. I want to thank, uh, thank them as an American, an ally, and especially as a parent. I also want to congratulate the Stonewall Monument on its fifth anniversary, if we can uh, congratulate monuments, I think we can, um, as the first and still only uh, national LGBTQ uh, monument, although hopefully that will change with the new administration. Uh, and so today, I hope that all of you who are able to will join me in supporting this initiative uh, and uh, the local community partners, um, kind of wherever this may find you. And uh, you can learn more by going to www.stonewallinitiative.org. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe. Hi, everybody. It's Michelle Kwan, Olympic figure skater. I am so proud to support this initiative. It is hard to believe that in 69 countries, it is still illegal to be LGBTQ+. And in 10 countries, same-sex relations can be punishable by death. It's why it's so important that the fight that started at Stonewall in 1969 must be waged around the globe. We won't stop until we win full LGBTQ plus global equality. That is why the Stonewall in Gives Back initiative is starting its international outreach to the community in places that need their Stonewall moment. The Stonewall in Gives Back initiative just awarded its first international grant to Archie Gay Naples, and will continue to help the LGBTQ plus community around the globe until there is victory and equality for all. Ciao Kart, ciao Tri, ciao a Stonewall, a tutto lo Stonewall. Eh, siamo qui della sede storica dell'associazione Antino Arciche Napoli, eh, fondata nell'84. Eh, questo è il centro di documentazione che raccoglie anche tutto il materiale storico. Un orgoglio enorme eh, poter eh, in qualche modo collaborare con voi. Due anni fa, nel, proprio quel maggio, eh, quel 17 maggio del 2019, Cart e Tree sono stati qui nella nostra sede, eh, sono stati qui eh, per la mostra sullo Stonewall che poi è arrivata anche a Palermo grazie a un grande del Consolato americano di Napoli. Eh, da allora si è costruito un rapporto forte, eh, un rapporto che è importante che eh, ci porta oggi a questa meravigliosa vostra decisione di collaborare con noi e sui nostri progetti. Per noi è un grande segno di riconoscimento per l'attività che svolgiamo sul territorio, che sono tantissime, perché dallo Stonewall Hill è partita tutta la nostra storia di liberazione e arriva dopo Dopo un momento importante, quello del Covid, che ha messo il mondo in uno stato di prigionia e di violenza legata alle paure, ad una malattia, a qualcosa che non era riconosciuto, non era riconoscibile e che purtroppo ha influito gravemente sulle vite delle persone. Quindi una rinascita, una vera rinascita che arriva nuovamente dallo Stonewall Will e coinvolge noi, coinvolge noi attivisti di Napoli, ci dà l'opportunità di portare avanti, di iniziare a, a gestire in maniera più uh, semplice la casa d'accoglienza che investe nella felicità delle persone. 
e qui a fianco c'è la, il nostro barretto sociale che grazie al supporto di, dello Stone Wall Hill diventerà eh, come dire, un bar aperto, un barretto aperto alla città, un punto, un presidio. Recupereremo uno spazio che è morto da anni ed è morto anche per colpa del Covid grazie al vostro sostegno. Quindi Casa delle Culture eh, e la sede storica di Arciche Napoli potranno in qualche modo rivivere grazie eh, al vostro aiuto. The bar is a very important place for us, for our community, to meet people, to socialize, to stay together, to feel not alone. So we very, very, we are very, very grateful to you and we hope to see you again in Naples or in New York maybe. And finally, thank you guys, thank you for your help and your support. Uh, we can wait to see you again back soon. Io ricordo quel maggio del 2019 quando Carter e Tree sono venuti con noi fin dentro gli incontri con i Boy Scout a Scafate, cioè in una stanzetta dove eravamo insieme a dei ragazzi a Scafati. Per noi la loro vicinanza, la vicinanza di Stonewall è un motivo di orgoglio, ma per noi Stonewall è famiglia, è casa e quindi grazie per l'aiuto e il sostegno da parte di tutti i nostri. Grazie davvero. Well, hello all of you. Felicitations to the Stonewall Inn on your fifth anniversary of being the first and, well, only LGBTQ landmark in the United States. Now, on the outside, the Stonewall Inn might appear to be just another humble, greasy spoon, a fluorescent bebe upon the block with unsettlingly sticky floors and lavatories that make an Arabian slum seem palatial. But believe you me, after having lived in a ramshackle motel for many years, it is sometimes the most unassuming of places that turn out to be truly life-changing treasure troves. Places where you can walk in and embrace yourself as well as others, and belly up to the bar to get a rainbow-labeled brew and play bingo with the surly drag queen. Anyway, here's to you, Stonewall Inn. May your flag forever fly because you are, well, to put it simply, you are the best. And here are a few more fun facts about the legendary Stonewall Inn and the Stonewall Wall Gives Back Initiative. Let's start with the fact You never know who you'll see at Stonewall. One time, Kate Blanchett dressed in drag to participate in a benefit to end gun violence. Or like the time the 2019 pre-party for the Met Gala took place at Stonewall. I mean, Darren Chris used to pop by and sing karaoke upstairs all the time. Don't let's forget the time that Demi Lovato stopped by on Pride. I was on the Stonewall float for the 50th anniversary of Stonewall in the Gay Pride Parade. And I heard somebody in the crowd say, Oh my God, is that Renee Taylor with Donatella fucking Versace? It was. I actually won the Stonewall Award which was really a wonderful honor for the work that I do with the LGBTQ community. And I told a joke about how I had a lot of sex with my husband, even though it turned out he was gay. Got into trouble with my second husband, who I'm no longer married to either. And that's a fun fact about my friend. Here's some Stonewall gossip. Did you know that the queen of pop herself, Madonna, through a surprise performance at Stonewall. She performed like a prayer. Everyone knows that. You posted videos from it on PerezHilton.com. Okay, but did you know that when she stopped by Stonewall a few days earlier, she walked through the whole club and nobody recognized her. What? How? Did they think it was some queen doing Madonna drag or something? Well, Perez Hilton may have gossip, but Stonewall has the tea. Literally. It's where we get the term tea dance. That's right. During the 1930s, Bonnie's Stonewall Inn had afternoon teas during the era of prohibition. That's why many LGBT establishments still have tea parties to this day. Did you know Stonewall has its own beer? 
Mm -hmm. The Stonewall Inn IPA, made by the Brooklyn Brewery in support of the Stonewall Inn Gives Back initiative. Isn't the can adorable? So you are literally drinking for a cause every time you order one. Come on by Stonewall and order one up for a great cause. And until you can get out there to order your own Stonewall Inn IPA, you can donate to this great cause at the link below. Every penny counts. Thanks to you, they will continue to help create safe spaces for the LGBTQ community all around the world. Happy Pride, everybody. Happy Pride. Happy Pride, Queens. Happy Pride. Mwah. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Okay, let's get this started. You ready to dance? I am. Uh, yeah.
After the riots, the building that housed the Stonewall Inn was occupied by various businesses, a Chinese restaurant, a bagel shop, a shoe store, most unaware of the building's history and significance. And it wasn't until the 90s that a new Stonewall bar opened in the west half of the original Stonewall Inn. And the block of Christopher Street between 6th Avenue and 7th Avenue was co-named Stonewall Place. But after years of neglect and mismanagement, the actual Stonewall Bar closed in 2006. The following year, under new management, ownership, and with significant renovations, the Stonewall Inn reopened, paying homage to its heritage and looking like a gay bar would have looked if it were legal in 1969. In 2016, President Obama designated the Stonewall National Monument in recognition of Stonewall's pivotal role in LGBTQ history, and it remains the first and only LGBTQ-related monument. The buildings that originally occupied Stonewall Inn have now been designated city and state landmarks. They were the first LGBTQ-associated properties to be listed on the State and National Register of Historic Places, thus being the first LGBTQ National Historic Landmarks. From a Prohibition-era speakeasy and almost a century worth of police raids to being named a Historic National Monument by the President of the United States, the Stonewall Inn is certainly rich in history. And it's a history that we are continuing to write. Symbolically, Stonewall can be considered our community's first safe space. It is our job to ensure future generations and LGBTQI plus people all across the world have access to safe spaces. How will history remember us in the fight for equality? Every day, we create our history. In 2011, Oasis Center launched Just Us to provide LGBTQ plus youth with a safe and affirming space to feel validated to be their authentic selves and to learn how to use their voices to create change within their community. Engaging youth and facilitated conversations, college and career access, service learning and enrichment opportunities, Just Us has grown into a collection of positive youth development programs and mental health supports dedicated to helping LGBTQ plus youth achieve their full potential. With programs for middle and high school youth, future activists and advocates, as well as small group and individual counseling, they serve over 150 LGBTQ plus young people each year. Just Us is the only full-time staffed and intentional programming for LGBTQ plus youth in Tennessee, and all of their services for every single young person is free of charge. Hi, I'm Mark Duckerley, CEO of the Oasis Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Oasis has been around for over 50 years, and we've been the place that young people and their families have turned in their time of greatest need. Ten years ago, we launched the Just Us program to be intentional and specific about creating open and affirming environments in Nashville for our LGBTQ youth. Since then, we have grown into an entire department that now serves middle schoolers, high schoolers, future activists and advocates, queer youth of color, and provides mental health support through small group and individual therapy. Um, and the way that Just Us has both impacted me and the community is giving us these sort of connections to other queer people that we never really had the chance to have before. Programs like Just Us are important to me because they give me a space to see youth just like me grow and connect together in time of fear and adversity. That sort of community has allowed me to grow as a person and view myself as being not alone within this, this big world. What is unique about Just Us is we are the only full-time staffed and intentional positive youth development program for LGBTQ plus youth in the state. And even now that we're virtual, we're expanding our reach even further into the deeper parts of Tennessee and Kentucky now too. Annually, we serve about 150 students across Middle Tennessee. Within Nashville, Just Us has done quite a lot of advocacy work with the Vanderbilt School of Medicine as well as the Belcourt Theater, uh, working to make those spaces more inclusive. This is especially important in this unprecedented time where LGBTQ plus violence and harassment have increased and are seen in both government offices and alarming statistics on the news. Just Us works to create a safe and affirming space where all LGBTQ plus young people can explore and celebrate their identities wholly and authentically while also achieving their full potential. So not only does Just Us 
provide a community for young queer people in Nashville, it also empowers them and makes them feel like that they are the next generation of advocates. Finding places like Just Us has improved mental health among youth and guided us on our journey to fully embracing ourselves. It's been fundamental to the young queer community in Nashville. Happy Pride Month and continue to stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much from Just Us at Oasis Center. some news for you, so pay attention. All you lonely ladies and guys out there, leave those umbrellas at home. Hey! It's rising. Yeah, it's rising. The is getting low. How low? According to all sunset. What sources now? The streets the place to go. I wanna go. know. That's the night for the first, first time.
Happy Pride, everyone. I'm State Senator Brad Hoylman, and I'm so glad to be here with the Stonewall Inn kicking off Pride Month with this star-studded streaming concert to benefit the Stonewall Inn Gives Back Safe Spaces initiatives. All of these speakers, including Speaker Nancy Pelosi, are making my heart palpitate a little bit. It's been said that the Stonewall Inn is one of the original safe spaces, and I couldn't agree more. In fact, the Stonewall Inn was literally my first stop when I moved to New York City over 28 years ago. So thank you to the Stonewall's co-owners, Kurt Kelly and Stacey Lentz, and all the sponsors. And I'm proud to declare with this official New York State Senate proclamation that I, New York State Senator Brad Hoylman, recognize that in the Stonewall Inn Safe Spaces initiatives, it is worthy of our highest regard, gratitude, and respect, and be it further proclaimed that I, New York State Senator Brad Hoylman, declare today, June 1st, 2021, to be Stonewall Inn Safe Spaces Appreciation Day in New York State Senate's 27th District. Congratulations and happy Pride.
Number.